The latest Minecraft snapshot is awesome. I've already done a little bit of fiddling around with some of the new features that have been introduced. The most exciting for me being the calibrated skulk sensor, which allows us to choose which sounds the skulk sensor is actually listening out for, which makes it actually usable inside of Minecraft redstone contraptions, and also allows us to do really fancy things like sending multiple different signals through one wireless line. If you haven't seen my first video experimenting with all of these new features, I would highly recommend and checking it out a link will be down in the description because today we're going to be expanding on the ideas that i discovered in that video and really doing a deep dive on this system let's begin with the issues with this system here i've got seven different buttons that make seven different sounds those seven different sounds are then sent through this line of skulk sensors and they arrive at these seven calibrated skulk sensors which listen out for the separate sounds and will give an output depending on what sound was made at the start. The issue is we're limited to seven or maybe eight if you get creative because those are the only sounds that we can make using redstone. All the rest are player based. Sounds like gliding with an elytra or mounting a mob which can't be made using redstone and a button. But I think that's where we can get creative. You see this line of calibrated skulk sensors right here are storing a sound. You see, I made the sound of me breaking a block and that got picked up by the system and now it is endlessly looping around. The sound has been stored, so I can make player specific sounds that then stay within the system and then when I want to send them out somewhere else, I can just move a block of wool out the way and it will be sent along a line. Think of this as like storing a charge that I can then release with a redstone signal. Now using a system like this, we could theoretically send 15 different sounds down one single wireless line and then have them all be decoded at the end. So let's get to work. The first thing that I have to do is calibrate to all of the skulk sensors to make sure that they're only listening to the specific sound that I want them to listen to. In this case, all of them are going to be calibrated with a signal strength of one, which is the sound of steps. So let's just quickly make sure that this works. If I place a block, you can see that that's not being picked up by the system. But as soon as I start walking around, the sound of me stepping should now be stored within our loop. Yep, there it is. It's bouncing around. So we have now effectively stored a signal strength of one, or I should say we've stored the sound of me stepping. And whenever I want to send the sound of me stepping elsewhere, all I have to do is hit the button, move the wall out the way, and then I can output that to somewhere else. I can send it down a long line of skulk sensors and have that signal strength maintained. That sound has been stored, which means we can decode it somewhere else. I'll be honest, this isn't particularly interesting when you've only got one of them, so let's start building more. Which means I have had to make some very minor adjustments just to make sure this thing is tileable. But now, in theory, I should be able to stack 15 of these next to one another, all with different sounds running. To be clear, this is very much in theory. Here goes. Okay. That looks good. Now the question is, if I change all of these to a signal strength of two, which is the sound of an entity landing, can that be stored next to this one that has a signal strength of one, which is the sound of footsteps? All right, a snowball should work here. I've missed, my aim is terrible. No sound? Does it not hear that? That is extremely odd because over here, I've got a signal strength of two, which is literally a snowball landing and that gets sent absolutely fine. After a considerable amount of head scratching, it turns out calibrated skulk sensors just don't like the clone command. So I've replaced all of them and now everything should all be working. So we have got two separate sounds that are independent of one another cycling around they've been stored within the system. This is very, very exciting indeed. Although I must admit getting the outputs out was a lot harder than I expected. I had to just fiddle around with wall placements and pistons interacting, and bits canoodling that I didn't want canoodling. But now I have a fully working system. So if I hit this first button, that will only allow us to output the first one and then that gets closed up once the sound has been outputted. And then the same thing goes for the second one. So it leaves it open until the sound comes through and then it closes it up again. Because if we didn't have this system and we relied entirely on just the button press, then there would be a chance that no sound would come through. Or if we had a pulse extender, multiple sounds would come through. Either way, not desirable. So this setup right here guarantees that you only ever get one output with every button press. So hopefully that has all of the issues worked out with this thing. And now we can go full scale. And I must admit, 
I'm kind of a little bit nervous. But so far I haven't run into any major issues, in fact I've given the whole thing a pretty nice new paint job, which I think we can all agree looks rather lovely, and importantly... This whole thing sounds insane. <laughs> it sounds crazy, I guess because all of them are calibrated to very similar digits. All of them are activating at all times. And it sounds rather lovely. Upon reflection, that explanation doesn't actually make any sense whatsoever, but I've stopped it now, so let's move on. The reason it is stopped is because all of our signal strength books are all in place, so all of these lecterns are giving different signal strengths to each of these calibrated skulk sensors. The signal strengths range from a signal strength of 1 all the way up to a signal strength of 15, and they're sorted in lines, hence all the fancy colours. And now I just have the rather unexciting task of replacing each one of these calibrated skulk sensors manually so that they actually work. I don't know why the clone command breaks them, but it does. Many boring minutes later, I've replaced all of the skulk sensors to find that this system up at the top here, which I spent a long time designing, doesn't actually work because the sounds can actually travel back through into the system and then you get a feedback loop and that's bad but I think after taking the same concept but executing it slightly differently I now have a system that does actually work and doesn't cause vibrations to go back into the loop so now we should see if I pick one of the buttons that currently has a sound in it being stored it actually outputted it it actually outputted something so if I press button number two we are getting an output through the system. Okay, this is very, very interesting. So that implies to me that the redstone is now up and running. All I have to do is put the sounds into the system. So you see these redstone lamps? These indicate which ones have sounds. So we have the first two, which is walking and then landing. And then I'm guessing this is block breaking and placing and then redstone activating and deactivating. So I need to work out what all of the other ones are. So we have Item interaction, that's number three. Gliding with an elytra is number four. Interacting with a villager, does that count? Causing damage is done. I did that without even knowing that that was a sound that was needed. You get the picture, there's a lot of sounds. And now all of them are stored within the system. We have got them all converted to redstone. And I must admit, it sounds pretty insane, doesn't it? This might be one of the weirdest redstone contraptions I've ever built. I mean, I just had to install the sound of me gliding with an elytra or eating a golden apple and I'm using that to get a signal strength that I'm sending wirelessly through the air. I mean, I don't even know what this is anymore. Anyway, let's get our line and decoder built, which is basically exactly the same as what I did the other day. So nothing really too exciting, but I guess it is really quite exciting because it's the final piece of the puzzle. With this now in place, the entire redstone contraption is all fully completed. So now let's see if it actually works. Can we store sounds send sounds, then decode those sounds into usable redstone signals. Okay, I'm gonna start things off with an easy one. Number one. Pressing number one. It looks like that sound has been sent. And we've got number one come through the redstone lamps over there. Okay, okay. What if I press, let's say number five. Let's do number five. Let's work our way up a little bit. Okay, I can see the skulk sensors turning on. That is, that is number five. This is actually functioning. This is actually working. So I've got 15 different redstone signals going down the same line, and that line is wireless. There's there's no wires there. It is it is mostly air. That's a little bit bananas, isn't it? That's pretty bananas. I've tried all of the different numbers now, and all of them are working properly. Everything is functioning well, and everything is being transmitted correctly. So we, I mean, this system this, um, is, it's so weird. It's so strange in the way that it works, but it's so cool in the way that it works. There is, however, one slight problem. Sounds, sadly, are not persistent like redstone is. So that means that if I leave this area, the sounds will be forgotten and the redstone contraption will break. I would love it if they changed this, but I imagine it would be a lot of work to change this. So I guess for now, this redstone contraption is going to remain as a mildly useful oddity, which actually is a pretty good way of describing me. I hope you enjoyed this little redstone video, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya!